Hey, it's John from Tinderbox Arts. Real quick video here, uh, kind of a trick that, that you can use to measure run out of brake rotors or wheels themselves. Now run out really just means um, if a brake rotor or wheel has been bent uh, or you know warped in some way, it will tend to wobble back and forth as it turns. And you wanna be able to measure that. Uh, and if it's a brake rotor, you may notice that feel in the um, brake, whether it's a rear or front, you know, either in the foot or in the hand, um, when, when you start to brake, you'll feel kind of a vibration. And a lot of times that can be run out of the rotor. Or if you've hit something on the road, uh, the wheel can get bent or, um, you know, warped. So there's lots of different ways that it can happen. Uh, but to be able to measure it, what, <clears throat> excuse me, a professional will use is a dial indicator like this. So this basically just measures if I look, if I look at my pinky there, if I push in, it moves the dial. All right, so I could mount this with a special uh, uh, mount that I have, and right at the rotor here. And if the rotor goes in and out, if it's warped, that dial is going to move. And that's great if you have one of these. And if you're a pro or a serious amateur, you probably do. But if you don't, there's another trick I use, um, just a quick and dirty method to measure run out. Right, here in the back wheel, I've set up this little uh, quick and dirty method so I can illustrate it for you. Now you need to have the tire or the wheel off the ground. If it's the back wheel, you can put it on a center stand if you have one. Uh, if you have a motorcycle lift, you can do that. Um, or you can use an automotive jack under the engine if you're careful with a piece of wood or something like that. So you have to get the wheel off the ground some some way. Well, all I've done here is I've taken a common ballpoint pen and I've attached it with tape to something that's rigid uh, on the frame. Now in this case it's the shock, um, but this bottom part of the shock doesn't move. And I have the ballpoint pen touching or nearly touching um, in close here. So now that I got a close up here, you'll see the tip of that pen is pointing right at the edge of that rotor. Now I can take my hand and turn the wheel. And if I have run out, that pen is either gonna touch or I'll see a gap there. Now the camera isn't at the perfect angle to do this, it's, that's as close as I can get the camera in there. But with a human eye, it's actually enough to see a gap in there. And you can pick up a pretty tiny gap. I mean, a 64th of an inch is easy to pick up and you can get you know, better than that if you have good eyes. So as I'm turning this, um, let me look without the camera, it's dead on. So there's no run out whatsoever on this rotor. Uh, now, if I were to put a dial indicator on there, I might get a tiny, tiny measurement, but it's nothing to be concerned about. But if you do have run out, if this rotor is warped, then you will see a gap in there as, as you turn the wheel. Uh, and then it'll come back to touch, and then it'll be a gap, and it'll come back to touch, and that kind of thing. So you'll see. Now, you can set this pen up to touch the edge of the wheel as well, and that'll tell you the same thing there. But if you're having vibrations or either in the brakes or potentially in the wheel itself, uh, you can set up this quick and dirty method very easily in the field. Just turn, see if you see any gaps. If you do, then you may have a problem and maybe you'll get more specific with a dial indicator, but at least you'll have some idea. But you can see here, this pen is not touching whatsoever, it's not moving, so that is dead on. So it's a quick and dirty little test for you.